bien faire sur tous les misères Leur audace qui était grande Nous fit de la terre offrande Oui ces chevaliers, je vous le dis N'ont jamais fléchi, n'ont jamais faibli Les explorateurs Rien ne les arrête, ni vent, ni tempête Ces hommes de cœur Non pour fond de toile qu'un beau ciel d'étoiles Le rêve de vencer Under the command of Sherrod Osborne, were icebound in a strait north of Canada. The polar winter was setting in. The ice was growing steadily thicker. It was impossible to move at all. What are you reading, uh, Rod? It's very late. Well, Dad, what's the North Pole like? Yeah, no one knows that, because no one has gone there. Many explorers have tried, but they all died in the ice. Could I be the first one to get there? Dad, could I be the first one to reach the North Pole? Son, it's pretty unlikely. Several expeditions are underway now. The others are getting ready. It's always like that. Born too late, that's all. <laughs> You never know. I just might be the first of the poll. Ooh, if I do, I guess I'd better get used to the cold. Mm. Maestro, why go all the way to the pole? Huh? You'd risk your life for nothing. Yeah, the unknown is always a challenge. A man wants to explore and discover what new lands are like, no matter how difficult or bleak. Anyway, the poles are magical. I don't get it. Where's the magic? Remember, the Earth revolves on an axis passing through its poles. When at the North Pole, the cardinal points no longer exist. The what? The what? Points? The cardinal points. You must know that. If you're facing north and to your right is east, and on your left is the west, and behind you is the south. Absolutely right. But suppose you're up at the North Pole. Right? Left? Front? Behind? All directions are south. At least you never lost, huh? <laughs> Point in any direction, still south. It'd be like south going left. Go to the right, it's south. In front, behind, yeah. south, out. Yeah, but there's another reason motivating explorers to know what's at the poles. Finding the northeast and northwest passages, the shortest sea routes between Europe and Asia and between Europe and the Americas. But are they open always? You remember Bering had tried to answer that question. Father! What is it, Rod? Look, Fridge of Nansen crossed the Greenland ice cap. Now he's looking for a sea route to the North Pole, Dad. You're like a compass. You always point north. 1897, the first attempt to explore Antarctica, the South Pole. The captain is a Belgian, Adrian de Gerlach. His second in command, the Norwegian, Roald Amundsen. He's 25, and it'll be his first voyage to the polar region, exactly opposite to the pole in the north. <laughs> The ice is closing in. We should sail for home. Yes. I believe you're right, Adams. Take the channel that's free. Too late. We'll be icebound here all winter. But we've no warm clothes and our supplies are short. We'll just have to manage. And quickly before the polar night. Captain, you're terribly ill, and that man's mad as a hatter. Look. <laughs> what can we do for him, Doctor? I say put him down. <laughs> Here we go sailing round the bend, round the bend. I take command of the ship. Now go and get that man. We'll cut our bed covers and make ourselves warm clothing. Ow! Oh, Mr. 
Now what do we use for fuel? We'll all freeze. We'll burn fat, Doctor, the fat of seals and penguins. <laughs> this is it. The polar winter begins now. There isn't going to be any sun for three months. For the first time, explorers had survived the glacial winter. And for Amundsen, it was a springboard to further exploits. Look there, Helmer. A small fishing boat for sale, and the price is right. Chance what would you do with it, Raoul? I'll find the Northwest Passage. In that nutshell, you're crazy. Include me out. Well, too bad. I'll see about supplies. Good day, sir. And what is it? I'll tell you. I need supplies for an expedition. Everything we'll need. Yes. And how many will you be? Six or seven. And how long a time? Oh, I'd say five years. That long? Well, that'll be quite an order. I want everything delivered to Captain Amundsen in the port. I'll see to it, sir. A very good day to you, sir. Three fours, that, that's twelve, and that, that I had twenty-two times. For, and, uh, uh, Captain Amundsen, I've put in twenty-two boxes of fried biscuits, uh, a quantity of dried beef, ten, uh, ten cod liver oil, uh, twenty barrels of kerosene, twenty barrels of flour as That's well. fine, figure exactly. Then put it all on my account. I'll pay you just as soon as I return. When you return? In this leaky bucket, you, you'll never come back. Oh, no, 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 no. You, 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 you pay me here and now, and I want my money and no credit, otherwise I'll call the police. And they'll put you in a debtor's prison. You've no reason to worry. You'll get paid. But now I'm busy. There are my dogs. Huskies. We'll need them, all right? Good. Bring them aboard. Well, Helmer, what are you doing here? No, oh, just out for a walk. They're splendid dogs. Well, they're used by Eskimos. You know all about them. And if you come, you're in charge of them. You can train them. We sail in that nutshell never. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Oh, all right, Captain. I'll tell him. Good. Well, well, Helmer, going on a trip. Oh, uh, get aboard, Captain. The buddies are coming. I, oh, you I have more supply boxes. Matters, men. Stand by to cast off. We're underway. Come on, Helmer. Wait a minute. All right. Stop! You are under arrest for non-payment of debt. Stop. You're going to prison. What's that? Speak up! I can't hear you! You crook! You, you bandit! And I said no credit! Ow. Oh! It's October, and ice is beginning to form. Land ahoy! Ah, that's surely King William Island. We'll look for a good port to winter in. Eskimos are friendly. Look at what? him. Huh? Who's he? Mush. 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 Hello there. Are you English? We happen to be Norwegian. But you speak English? Yeah, yeah, yeah. A long time ago, when I was a young man, some Englishman came here. So I speak it. What happened to them? No, they all died. They didn't have any dogs. 
Well, because they didn't have dogs. Yeah, here in the far north, you need dogs to survive. You got me? Yes, I have six of them. All right, let's see him. I think he's our friend. Go and get our dogs. Hmm. Uh, mush. Uh, mush. Oh! 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 Good boys! Oh! 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 They're not too well trained yet. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah, we can help train them. They use the whip with a great deal of precision. The dog barely gets touched this way. Yes, I understand. Precision with a whip. No, it takes great skill to be precise. Mm, yeah. Marsh, 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 marsh. Yeah. yeah. It's good, very good. Yeah. Well, you're going fast. Now, after working your dogs, you gotta feed them. Nice big chunks of seal, fresh bear meat, not best. Here you are, boys. Din -dins. <laughs> Oh, I guess they like it. I should explain. And with working dogs, there's a boss dog and his lieutenant. And you gotta respect the rank. The uh, rank? Yeah, maybe like I say. Yes, you gotta, he is the boss, and he's next. Yeah, and he's the next in line. And they're wild, but disciplined. Your clothes are too tight. We will take skins and furs to make other ones for you. I will begin with the big one. You will stand up. Ouch! <laughs> Many skins to cover him. We can hunt bear now that daylight has come. Uh, bear is tasty. Mm -hmm. That's in high rocky order. <laughs> the explorers would remain in the ice for two years, and then one day. Well. Have to break the ice, use axes and grappling hooks. Yeah. <laughs> Explosives! Northwest Passage? Yeah. Cool. Explorers have now sailed around the North Pole going east and west, but no one has yet reached the pole itself, and that turns into a real race to get there first. In 1895, the Norwegian Nansen has to abandon his ship trapped in the ice just 450 kilometers from his goal, and he goes on by kayak. In 1896, the Swedish explorer Solomon Andre made another attempt in a hot air balloon and died on the way. 1890, Louis Amade of Savoy came to within 400 kilometers of the pole and disappeared. The American Admiral Robert Perry organized eight successive expeditions. You may be sure Amundsen was in the race. Eh? Oh, Mr. Amundsen. This is a surprise. It is an honor to serve you, Captain. <laughs> As I recall, last time you sent the police after us, sir. I was young and impetuous, so what can I say? Yes, well, now I'm here to settle the debt. With We're interest. all square. Uh, well, that is, uh, well... Only I believe that you've forgotten my compound interest, sir. Interest on interest? <laughs> compound interest. But, Mr. Hamilton, it, it, it's been such a long time, and time is money. <laughs> Ow! <Ooh. laughs> Naturally, for your next expedition, I am ready to serve you, sir. Biscuits, dried meat, salted cod, sugar, flour, anything at all. What next expedition? We've had enough. We've no intention to go on more expeditions. Well, I... Uh, I mean, you've discovered the Northwest no Passage. No one's reached the pole yet, and who knows, I could be the first. 
but Robert Perry's on his way. And Frederick Scott as well. The pole, you realize, six months of darkness. Maybe you'll freeze. No, sir, not me. Oh, no, may heaven fall on me. Oh, oh I say that's a good omen. The Fram, another leaky old tub. <laughs> it's all rotten. Somebody ought to chop it up and burn Come it for and take firewood. A look. look at what? I'll show you. It's built to withstand Fine. Arctic ice. The hull can be reinforced, and I'll put in a diesel engine. Never! You understand? I am never taking this through Arctic ice. May heaven yes. uh, fall on my head. Oh. oh! You see, I'll go up the coast of Greenland. I'll be icebound in winter. And the ice flows north. May heaven fall... Helmer, oh. it's not heaven, a bulb. That's all. All right, Roald. I'd like to manage the huskies. If you like, I'll go part of the way with you. You understand? Sure, sure, I understand. In one month, everything will be ready. Hey, here's a bit of news for you, Mr. Amundsen. The North Pole has been conquered. It's what? Oh. Hey, hey. Why don't you do that for? Admiral Robert Perry at the North Pole. May have a go. I wanted to be the first one. No. Why, of course. That's the other challenge. Yeah. You said you'd supply us on our next expedition. We're going to the North Pole. We'll need all this. Biscuits, fuel oil, dried meat, flour, cooking oil, paraffin, oil for lamps, explosives, weapons, ammunition, six dog sleds, 25 pair of skis, one prefabricated house, five pigs, six sheep, a cat to chase rats, and what was the last thing? Oh, yes, dogs. Where are the huskies, huh? All right, Helmer, how many have you got? A uh, hundred. For the North Pole, they're the best you can get. That's perfect. We are going to the North Pole, oh, Yes, of course. We? Where else would we go? Amundsen said he was going to sail through the Bering Strait to the west of Alaska. He said it was going to save time, since his earlier voyage seemed interminable to him. He planned a course to the southwest, right here, past South America, and then back up to the Pacific, heading toward the north. And presto, here he is on the equator. Roll! Ah. Quick, up on deck, gotta see this. Crossing the equator. <laughs> it's the tradition. First time across, you're initiated. To Neptune, past the equator. We're in the southern hemisphere. <laughs> now I'd better tell you, I've got another little surprise. Oh, yeah? What's your surprise? We're not going to the North Pole. What? We're going to the South Pole. Robert Perry's been to the North Pole, right? We'll be the first ones to get to the South Pole. But Robert Scott, a British officer, is already on his way. And we'd better hurry. The race is on. And Amundsen headed for Whale Bay. The barrier is lower. <laughs> Here is Amundsen getting close to the pole, but Scott's already on the ice. Scott and Amundsen are about 1,400 kilometers away now, and Summer Amundsen chose his best husky. Scott is using Manchurian ponies, used to the cold and a motorized sleigh. Yeah, but which one is going to win? In April, the polar night begins. We have two months to put supplies along our route to the pole. We'd better begin now.
That's it. We can return now. Huskies. Look, the sun's going below the horizon. We aren't going to see it again for four months. That's fine. Red tents are more visible and could be warmer. was months long. Today we'll see the sun. Oh. oh! Well, our first sunny day was pretty short. Right. We waited six months. Now let's go. March! March. 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 Yeah. Yeah. The mountains are 6,000 meters in altitude. We have to find a passage. That way. Oh. A passage over there. <laughs> the ponies are sweat and frozen. Now they can't move. Destroy them. Six degrees south, 240 leagues, uh -huh. and it's straight ahead. Let's see, 89 degrees, 35 minutes, we're almost there. All I'd ever thought of was the North Pole. Now I'm as far away as I can be. <laughs> Great, but I'm freezing. Let's go home. Norwegian flag. They beat us to it. Gone back already. Let's take the picture, then we'll return. Captain Scott and his men arrived at the South Pole one month after Amundsen, but like so many other explorers before them, who had bravely faced polar ice and snow and piercing glacial winds, none of these men returned. 
Today at the South Pole, there is in their honor a base named Amundsen Scott. Thank you.